Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl LB and Blue. Welcome to my channel, Watch With Me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on our favorite movies and TV shows. This movie came out the day after the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. On the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, I don't know if it's just me, but it's always raining. It's always gloomy and I'm never in a good mood. I'm always sad. I'm always thinking about stuff. My timeline is full of Katrina stuff and I'm just not in a good mood, okay? So right at like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, I was up. Popped on Deliverance, and when I tell you I was delivered up out of my phone, okay, because this thing was good to me. It was so entertaining, bro. It was, it, now, I don't know if I would say that this is a horror situation. You know, this is not going to be one of your horror Halloween spooky season watches. But, baby, if you're looking for some entertainment, or looking for Miss Glenn Close to give some of the best lines of her career, I am O, all right? This is the one for you, okay? Let's get into Deliverance because I have been delivered. So the movie opens up and we are meeting Ebony, who is a single mom. Well, I don't know if she's single or not, y'all. I don't know if the lady divorced or if her husband left or if he in the war in Iraq, child. I don't really know what time of the year it is. I don't really know what decade we in. Ebony is a mother of three who has moved to Pittsburgh. She has two boys and one girl and they have moved into this new house for a fresh start. Now, we are seeing in the opening montage of this movie, creepy kid drawings, all right? And I don't ever trust a kid who's drawing weird stuff in a horror or thriller because immediately jail or some sort of institution where they can be strapped down and away from the general public. We are seeing that Ebony is letting her youngest son, Andre, decorate his new room, okay? And he's decorating it very much like one of the opening credits for the Cosby show. You remember like right around the end time of the Cosby show, it was when Olivia was on there and Pam came, you know, that was, was giving that kind of energy, okay? Ebony has a mother living with her. Her name is Berta, baby. Let me tell you about Berta. If you are in the black community, you are a loved one knows a Berta, okay? Berta is a white woman who has been in the black community since then. And I will say this, Berta wig, okay, Berta said, baby, listen, you will not catch me slipping. What lace? <laughs> Did her thing, she put on her makeup, she shaved her eyebrows off and then drew them back on and then took her band off and it went on and went to work. Berta is in the middle of chemotherapy treatment. She has cancer, okay? So, you know, Ebony got a lot of stuff going on in her house. On top of being a recovering alcoholic, she is also a terrible mother with a bad fucking attitude. Cause this is, you know, loosely based off of a true story of a mom who said her children were possessed and the people in the community was like, she not lying. That lady, all her children was just out here tripping. That's the foundation, all right? That's where we are starting off. Now it looks like Berta has a good relationship with her grandchildren, but that relationship with her daughter is, is lacking a little bit. It's lacking and they have some work to do, okay? Because, you know, Berta has found God, you know what I mean? She has found God later in her life. She is, you know, battling cancer. And she said, babe, I need all the support I can get. Let me go on back home, okay? I'm going to the church house. She wants her grandchildren and her daughter to go to church. But, you know, Ebony ain't really with that. So they sit down to dinner and um, baby Berta said, listen, are you trying to fight vampires, baby? Because why is it so much garlic in this catfish? I ain't teach you to cook like that. Baby, she, <laughs> Ebony said, don't fucking start with me, Berta. Not right now. I'm not in the mood. The Pittsburgh Water uh, Supply Company is on my ass and I don't have time. Don't come over and start with me. Eat the fish or don't eat the fish, but shut the fuck up about it, okay? And she told her mama to shut the fuck up and I was scared, girl. I was like, is this the beginning of the deliverance portion of the movie? Because Berta look like she don't play. Berta look like she'll beat the shit out of you. I, that's just me. I don't know Miss Berta, baby, but Miss Berta had an outfit on from City Trends, baby. And I was one thing I could tell you about a white lady with an outfit on from City Trends with the pants, with the holes in the pants and the name plate on and with shaved eyebrows. That's not the kind of white lady you want to fuck with. Okay. Well, I thought they was getting ready to start fighting at the table, but they didn't. They didn't. Okay, that was good. The little boy Andre wants some more milk. And Ebony said, no, you shouldn't have had the glass that you had because you lactose intolerant. Andre, small ass, gonna say, anybody told you that? You just made that up because you cheat. So Ebony proceeds to backhand slap the little boy in the mouth. That, that deserved acknowledgement. 
but she ain't had the backhand slap the little boy in the mouth okay so then the little boy mouth bleeding all right so now he got a cut in his mouth and then she gonna say oh, damn dre hold on sis dre didn't hit himself in the mouth dre didn't do that dre is currently not possessed at the moment you did that how you gonna be mad at him because his mouth bleeding because you hit him in the mouth girl come on now She's a terrible parent. She needs some parenting classes, at least a pamphlet or something, child. Cause she not, she started off in, on the wrong foot. Evan is sitting at the table. Cause you know, I had told you the Pittsburgh water company and the damn Pittsburgh artificial intelligence operation station is on her ass. They pay these bills. Okay. I was confused because I thought they had just moved there. Okay. So why are the bills piling up already? Because I thought y'all was just doing a renovation station on the house. Cause you was trying to get a fresh start. Did you did you inherit the bills of the people that came in the, that was in the house prior to you? Cause why is the bill stacking up? Okay, you know she's sitting at the table doing the bills, and baby, a fly flies into her glasses, and it's just you know trying to you know maybe the fly was trying to you know provide some assistance. You know, like if you do a payment plan on a water bill, and then do an extension on the cable bill, then that'll free up an additional fifty dollars for you to go ahead and pay the light bill. And then, you know, like maybe the fly was trying to help. I don't know, cause the fly flew in her glasses and I'm like, bro, flies is real biggity out here nowadays. So she said, you know what? It's boo boo flies in here. That's a good ass point. Let me go see what's going on. So she goes to the base, to, to the door for the basement. All right. And she opened the door and it's fly, it's a fly convention in a damn doorway for the, to go down to the basement. We don't have basements in New Orleans, okay? The basement is underwater, okay? We below sea level. So I don't know nothing about a basement, but because everything I know about them has been from TV. Every other basement in the world that I have seen on TV is a terrible place to be, okay? It's horrible. Kevin McAllister taught me that from an early age, okay? So maybe she on the same kind of time. I don't know because she didn't want to go down there to inspect to see where the flies was coming from. She ain't even turn the light on. Also, something down there was functified, okay? She was like, oh. And I'm like, sis, I feel like that warrants further exploration. Everybody go to bed. And you know Andre had got his mouth popped earlier in, in the evening because he wanted more milk, baby. Andre came down in his, in his tidy whities and went open that refrigerator and literally took the milk and just drank it to where it's falling all down around his toes. And I said, baby, she gonna beat your ass. Like you... You got popped in the mouth for requesting another glass of milk and now you downstairs drinking all the milk and wasting most of the milk? <laughs> Andre, it's like you know your mama. Again, I'm confused about the timeline because I thought that they had just moved there and then all, well, I guess it really don't take none because trash children is trash children. The timeline don't really matter. So the oldest boy is being bullied. Cause so the little boy walking home and the little boy's on the corner who did not go to school, who should have been in school, or messing with the oldest brother. Cause she at the house and she's putting up some clothes and stuff and she finds uh, some alcohol in the little boy's room with some money. And so she goes downstairs to confront him. What the fuck's this? You know, she got an attitude about it. And the little boy is crying because he just got bullied by the Lacona boys. The oldest son is like, I was hiding from you, you drunkie. Like, that's not my stuff. So she said, hold my mule, okay? And she walked down there and beat the little boys up on the corner. It was like, if you fuck with my son, I'm gonna fuck with you, okay? And if you wanna tell your mama, I'm gonna rock her ass too. And I said, okay, she's not rap tight. Y'all, this is when I knew, baby, that I had something on my hands, okay? Because Ebony bring her ass back down there from beating up on the child, okay? And she's sitting on the porch with her mama. Berta's sitting there smoking her square, okay? She said, oh, so now you wanna tell me how to handle my kids? And then she say, some fucking model mother you were. So obviously they got some history, okay? Obviously Berta, when she was back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Before she had a asymmetrical vibe, Berta wasn't the best mama. Okay? Ebony said, listen, don't don't worry about it. I'ma handle my kids how I handle my kids. I knock bitches teeth off for less. Berta gonna say, then do it, bitch. What? Girl. <laughs> I said not Black China and Tokyo Tony, then we're so rocky. Girl, I was like, what? I know, I know for a fact that Leandre Dante Daniels got that scene because he saw Black China and her mama in the kitchen about to square up in front of the dishwasher. I know this for a fact. I said, Glenn. Girl, I, just, <laughs> I said, baby, Corella DeVille is not here to play with you hoes today. <laughs> Girl, so do it, bitch. 
office. This is, this is just the kind of thing I need to get me out my Katrina phone, baby. Yes. Thank you, Lee Daniels. Thank you. Miss Berta is my favorite. I'm I'm just going, I ain't going to be before you long, baby. But Miss Berta is my favorite because she got that shit on, honey. She got on her nameplate and a, and a little asymmetrical, like, little cutout situation from City Trans, bitch. And a little, you know what I'm saying, one, two, skip a few with the holes in the jeans that she got from Shein, honey. I need you to stop playing with Miss Bertha right now, okay? Because Miss Bertha said, I didn't teach you to put all this garlic in this catfish. Get down there embarrassing my grandson and shit. I'm just, hey, I'm just trying to say, come on home to the Lord. You can't be outside fighting and shit. And if you gonna hit me in my face, hit me in my face so we can go ahead and fight, baby. Because one thing's for certain, two things for sure. You not gonna beat me up. That's what I'm trying to say. A really cute scene, y'all. It's really cute. Right? Miss Berta sitting on the sofa. Ebony sitting in on the floor in between Miss Berta's legs. Eb you know, getting a little sew in. Okay, Miss Berta know how to sew in. All right. Ebony in between Ebony's legs sitting on the floor crisscross applesauce is her daughter. So it's three generations of, of women in the family doing each other's hair. And I said, oh, baby, that's so cute. And the little boy is on a little ottoman or something, child, eating popcorn. And they watching an the old school throwback movie. And they know all the lines, baby. They having a little family moment. And I'm like, okay. Are y'all dysfunctional or not? Like, let me get me get let me, let me get straight about it. So Berta go down there to the chemotherapy place, right? She gonna get her chemotherapy and she's going by herself. And she sees her, I don't know if it's like a nurse or like a tech or like a, you know, like a, a student. I don't know, but we meet Melvin. Melvin is played by Omar Epps. In the 1900s, all right, Omar Epps, choom, right here for your girl, okay? Because you got the juice now and loving basketball and the wood, like all the, all the, all of them, all of them. He works at the chemotherapy place. First of all, baby, why does he pull up with a do-rag on? If, if, if you ever have me in a place where medicinal stuff is happening, baby, I don't care if it's a med spa, I don't know if it's a doctor's office, I don't care if it's a minute clinic, I don't care if it's at the local in, uh, in nose and throat specialist. If somebody come in my room with a do rag on, I'ma hit the fucking ceiling. Cause take that nasty shit off your head. You put, you go to your house with that. Don't pull up with no damn uh uh, uh medicinal do rag on. Ever came up in there was like, whoa, whoa, what's up, Berta? Hey, 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 girl. <laughs> I said, I said, why y'all got that on his head? Like, hey, anyway, so they start flirting. Melvin about to throw it all away for Berta because he get Berta number and they supposed to kick it, okay? And I said, okay, well, listen, baby. Stranger things have happened. Go, go off, Melvin. Ebony has been paying for her mother's chemotherapy treatments out of pocket. I swear to you, I am not joking. I really don't understand how because I have not seen this girl go to work in the entirety of this episode, baby. She is on her way to the ball, on her way home from the ball. She is at the house. She is not looking to see what's down in the basement, baby. She just is never at the, at the workhouse. She comes home drunk one day. Came home and she's hung over and drunk, you know. She goes to the kitchen and she throws up in the sink and sees that it's her son. And her son is like, you know, pissed about it. She's like, you know, they get into it because, you know, the son is like, you moved us away from our daddy. You moved us to this horrible house. You're still drinking. You're always mad. You didn't hit my little brother in the face. They got flies and shit all over the house. I'm fucking sick of it. I'm about to go. This is one of those moments as a as a mom of boys where you realize that your son is stronger than you are because she starts to like try to fight the little boy and the little boy knock her head between the goddamn wash and the dryer. Knocked all the rings out her ass like Sonic, okay? So I was like, oh, damn, babe. That's a tough way to go. Ebony then took the little boy money. The little boy has been getting money from his daddy and he's been saving the money so he could get away from his mama. The little boy Andre comes downstairs and some kind of way the drawer of utensils is open or the, he or she opened the drawer because she was getting a knife to stab him. I don't know, child. And the little boy ends up falling and hurting himself, like hurting his little arm, dislocating his shoulder or something like that. I don't know. So now we meet Cynthia, played by the Monique. Cynthia is a DCF officer that has had prior contact with Ebony and her family. Cynthia pulls up in a Mercedes Benz SUV with a big ass diamond ring and a two piece polka dot suit with a peplum in tote. Okay, she got her asymmetrical bob as well. Now, all the social workers stand up, huh? Okay. I'm a social worker and I just want to say that's not how you pull up for a DCFS <laughs> visit, okay? You're not going to pull up with your big jewelry on. You're not going to pull up in a suit with heels because, bitch, you might have to run. 
and or fight, okay? That wasn't indicative of the social work experience that I know to be true for home visits, but hey, I used to wear scrubs and Air Max, bitch, because guess what? <laughs> not me, okay? Not I saved the cat. I see you got your new house, why you ain't call me? <laughs> and tell me you was moving. Like, how did you even think that that was okay? So Ebony is like, well, shit, I didn't really want to tell you that we was moving because I don't really want to deal with you, Cynthia. I ain't even going to lie to you. So Cynthia, baby, took a look around and did a little quick assessment of the kids. Shante got some cuts on her arm. And Cynthia said, well, what's going on with the cuts on your arm? Shante said, hmm, why, whatever are you referring to? She look at the littlest baby. He hunched over like Quasimodo because, you know, he done hurt his arm, you know, shoulder or elbow or scapula or something. Child trying to protect his brother from his crazy ass mama. And he said he don't know what's going on with him. She, Cynthia said, you know what? Y'all go ahead and get the fuck out. I got to talk to your mom because y'all out here tripping. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what's going on. As soon as the kids out of earshot, she sat in that lazy boy and reclined her damn feet with her pink stilettos pumps in the club and was like, look, you got to get your shit together. Okay, what the fuck is going on around here? Okay, the kids all beat up. Your, your, your husband went in the court and said you was on drugs, you was drinking and shit, and there's all kind of stuff going on. Your children need to know that you are right, and it don't look like you are right. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm trying to help you, and I can't help you if you don't help yourself. Now, get your shit together. Where the front door at? I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a second. What you cussing for? What you... <laughs> Since it was in there knocking pill bottles off and shit, I said, girl, baby, listen, let me tell you something. One thing's for certain, two things for sure, girl. You'd have got your head knocked between the wash and the dryer. You pulled up at the right person's house like that, girl. What did you sit in the lazy boy for? First of all, you don't ever sit down because you're going to get a roach in your pocket and then you might take that shit to your house, okay? You don't be sitting out there. That's how I know she not a real social worker, baby. Sitting in the lazy boy reclining. Child, I remember one time I went in somebody's house. And I was a baby social worker, baby. I went to somebody's house and I sat down, something said, Ram! and I, uh, a cat shot out, baby. Me and the cat was right behind each other, baby. I ain't never went back in that house again. I said immediately, no, God, I can't. It was so goddamn dark in there. I ain't even see that they were. Bye. Y'all, so it's time for Shantae's birthday. And for some reason, Melvin thought it would be a good idea for him to bring his ass in there and sing a Lou Rawls song at a 16-year-old birthday party. I said, baby, what? I could see if you picked you a good old Luther Vandross, excuse me, Miss, what's your name? You could even pick a Tucker song if you want to swing out, okay? I'm a work it out. I could see that, okay? I could see that. Lou Rawls, you'll never find. Blom, 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 blom. Melvin, you going to embarrass her in front of all friends and stuff. Then Miss Lawrence over there with a 613 wig on, Teaching the kids how to play craps in the corner of the room. I said, well, wait, 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 what is going on? Andre said, baby, listen, I'm let me, I want to sing. And Ebony said, no, it's time for you to go to bed. She go back downstairs to the party. Hi, Miss Lawrence talking. Now, I don't know if Miss Lawrence a booster or if, cause, cause she says, she, I don't know if they work at Saks Fifth or if they boost from out of there or if, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, but I know a scammer when I see one. Okay, let's move on. They down there kicking it and they start hearing banging on the basement door. Ebony go open the door and it's Andre on the other side of the door banging his forehead in on the door. So now he got a big ass bruise on the middle of, her on the middle of his forehead. And Ebony was like, I thought I told you to go to bed. What you doing? That didn't freak her out in the slightest. She was more mad that Andre wasn't where he was supposed to be. He said Andre out there and was like, why are you in the basement? And Andre was like, I was talking to Trey. He live in my closet sometimes. Like, that's my friend. She put the little boy to bed and she down. She immediately go downstairs, start drinking and rolling her ass all on some random man from Atlanta. I thought this was a child's birthday party. Y'all have lost the plot. Y'all have lost the, the, the reason that we in here today. Why are we playing Lil' Kim and Lou Rawls? At a 16-year-old birthday party. I don't even know what 16-year-olds listen to, but I can guarantee it ain't little Kim and Lou Rawls. What did we what did we we need to come on back? Let's 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 regroup. Let's focus up. Come on, Ab. Come on. I, I believe in you, okay? Well, Asia, I keep calling that I keep calling it Asia Miss Lawrence. Miss Lawrence character is Asia. Asia say, baby, let me tell you something. This is not my kind of party. I'm not about to be throwing my ass in a circle at no child's party. I'm about to go, okay? So Asia calls Ebony out and say, baby, I'm about to go. I got to go to Saks at 9 o'clock in the morning. You and your ragged ass gotta go to work in the morning too. I don't know why you ain't acting like you ain't got nowhere to go. So Ebony tell Asia, I hope you get caught tomorrow, bitch. And then she, and then Asia say, Don't worry, your nigga get me out. <laughs> Black people. And they probably was going to be friends again. Yeah, like that's probably the kind of friendship they got. They call each other ugly and stupid. 
and all kind of disparity and stuff. And then like four to five minutes to two hours later, they'd be like, girl, what you watching? So the kids go to school. Nate, the oldest son is in class and the teacher is talking to him about the AIDS epidemic that hit, you know, that was really a, a huge, huge problem in the 90s, right? She's talking about how it impacted disproportionately, you know, black the black community, right? And so Nate just busts out laughing. Nate said, <laughs> like he is just, Baby, his flabbers was gassed. The daughter, she had choir rehearsal and they singing the, the most Catholic song that ever Catholic in a song, okay? And she starts her cycle, but the baby, the cycle had said Expelliarmus, bitch. And it just was like a lot. So it's like streaming down her leg and she don't, she's like, oh, the whole class is leaving. She walk up to the teacher with this look in her eye and she just like is hemorrhaging on her little white socks and her G-nights. And I'm like, oh my God, girl, you need to go to the doctor. Here go Andre. Andre in the schoolhouse, okay? And the teacher talking about Valley Forge or some shit. I don't know what the lady was talking about. Andre said, baby, my guts is bubbling. And I just I just can't take it no more. I cannot go another second. I have got to get this demon up out of me. So he proceeds to take his pants down. And doo-doo. Oh. <laughs> On the floor. In the people classroom, and all the children is like, ew, ew. And so the teacher is fussing at Andre because, yeah, Andre proceeds to pick up his fecal exploration, okay, and then chuck it at the lady in her open mouth. Andre would have to die. I'm so, so sorry to humanity. That boy got to go. He needs to be taken care of. And I'm only saying that because this is a fictional child, okay? This is a fictional situation. If we ain't fiction, kill that little boy, okay? You're not gonna throw shit at me, baby. You, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for what you're going through, but fictional Andre, you gonna have to die, baby. I'm so sorry, okay? Why you throw that shit at that lady? <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny, and I'm gonna need y'all to gather yourselves up and have some decorum about this stuff, okay? You know what? She did go to work. She a barber. She went to work. I'm so sorry, Ebony girl. I ain't mean to doubt you. They call her at the barber shop and say, Ebony, come get these ragged ass children from this schoolhouse, baby. Don't you ever doubt this doorway again. You better come take your children, dispose of these children from out the schoolhouse expeditiously. They're gonna be on the porch waiting for you. So the kids are rightfully in the hospital okay and they ran tests on the kids and ebony and miss alberta is in the room with the little lady getting you know the, the results from all the mris and the cat scan and the ct scan everything is fine nothing's going on with the kids ebony don't want to hear that shit because i mean yeah something wrong with my children my child took a shit in the middle of the third grade valley forge lesson baby we got to figure out what's going on ebony is cussing the lady out and Miss Alberta's like, stop talking to the lady crazy. She she trying to help us the best way she can. Evan is like, no, these are our kids. We got. I'm not gonna let her push us out. If the lady didn't push you out, she just was trying to say that the results had came back negative. She ain't even give you the next steps, and you had cussed out at her with her little bang. Child, she had a bang yang. She was just sitting in there trying to give you the results. It's not her fault. She got a bang yang, and the results came back negative. Damn. The MRI results lady was like, let's talk about the bruises, bitch. Hmm, because all your kids got some bruises and some dislocation stations, some cuts and stuff. Let's talk about that. Okay, it's not that's not gonna come up on a CT scan, but that's what I like to discuss. It's shambles. It's it's shambles. Now I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm sure that Miss Andrea Day is a very nice person, and I'm sure that she is sweet as pie. But baby, let me tell you something. My girl got them chops. You understand what I'm saying? Miss Day, let me put some respect on your name, baby, because I don't want you to come over here talking about me, talking to me, and trying to come get me. That bitch is scary, okay? When she was in Billy Holiday across from my husband, Travante Rose, baby, I was like, first of all, why are you talking to my husband like that? Like, I, she, her mouth is slick, okay? They write the lines, but the way Miss Day delivers the lines, baby, she be putting a little extra tawny and statuaries on that thing. You know, when she got out the, the, the lady with the bang yang office, you know, the results lady, she cuss her mama smooth the fuck out because <laughs> why? You, why you just don't ever support me? You see, you, she basically called her mama a Karen. Miss Alberta was like, you beat my grandchildren. And if you do it again, I'm going to turn you in myself. I don't give a damn if you're my daughter or not. That just sent Ebony smoothed off, okay? Ebony got, cussed her mama out, cussed the kids out, cussed the parking lot attendant out. So then she said, Shantae, get the fuck in my car. What the fuck y'all doing? Fake bitch. Get the fuck in my car. What y'all doing? I was like, I don't want to go 
going with you, girl? I'm not even, she ain't even asked me to get in the car. I'm telling her I don't want to go with her. That bitch is scary. So they back at the house. Uh, Ebony in the tub, she, you know, she washing Andrea hair in the bathtub. Uh, everybody else laying down. Ebony phone ring. Ebony say, Ma, can you get that at my house? I said, no, bitch. <laughs> I'm not getting your phone for you. You had told me you was going to beat me in the street. Now you want me to answer your phone, girl? Fuck you. I'm not answering your phone, girl. Ma, can you get that? You better ma get off my face, girl. You better get your own damn phone. Ebony crazy. <laughs> Ebony. Ebony crazy. Ma, can you get that? Bitch, you had just cussed me out in the parking lot across from the doctor's office after you just cussed me out in the bang yang lady office. Nah, girl, you better get out of here. So she got to go get her phone, right? So she leave Andre in the bathtub. Nate, the oldest son, is in his bed. Baby, Nate, some, some get down in Nate Shondo and tell him to go murder his brother. He's strangling the, the brother, Andre, in the tub under the water. So Ebony get back in there and cannot get Nate off of Andre's neck. So the grandma run up the stairs. Ebony finally get Nate off of Andre. And Ebony jump in the tub to make sure Andre all right. And then Miss Alberta got Nate. And Nate is like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. I was not trying to murder him. I, he the only one I really get down with. I really love my lover. I would never want to do that. I'm like, damn. Y'all don't want to leave? Like, that would have probably been my cue to, like, let's go. Like, let's just, you know what I'm saying? Let's just let the bill collectors find us, bro. My credit already bad. I get a barbershop job at another place. If I cut hair on the street, if that's what it takes. Because let's get in this grand marquee sedan and get the fuck up out of here please they ain't want to listen to me the house is in complete and total shambles and they get a knock at the door and it's cynthia and her asymmetrical vibe child knocking at the door i said girl this is not we don't have time for this no girl this they got a demon trying to get this lady kids and we got stuff we got to figure out and you coming at the worst possible time baby ebony just break down bitch i'm hearing stuff i'm seeing stuff my children try to murder each other and i don't know what's happening i don't know what's going on okay you know i said well i probably wouldn't have shared that with a uh, officer of the uh department of child and family services because she is a mandated reporter so i probably wouldn't have took that route but baby ebony said baby listen i i, I don't really know what else to do now, baby, once again, I'm going to have to give it to Academy Award winner Monique, baby, because she got them chops, okay? She had put some Tony Sacheries on her lines, too, because she shared with Ebony. Cynthia said, baby, I had a child, okay? He's no longer with us. He done went on home to glory because I turned my back for two seconds and a car had hit my baby. And she, I'm talking about crying down, baby. I said, oh, girl, Monique, where you had pulled that from? I love, I love me some Miss Monique, baby. You understand what I'm saying? She always gonna give me that tone of sash reads on her stuff, okay? That tender moment had went right the hell out the window because Berta came downstairs with no wig, some basketball shorts on, and a baseball bat and chased Cynthia ass out the house. And Cynthia was like, ah, fuck all that. Stop hitting your kids, Ebony. So then they also see Miss Ingenue Ellis, okay, across the way. And she just been staring, okay? She's been here. I ain't really mentioned her because she ain't really done nothing but just... She just been looking, okay? And so they think, Miss Berta and Ebony think that she's in there with the DCFS people, okay? And she's not, okay? She's a whole separate situation from, from what they got going on. So now we meet Reverend Bernice Jane, played by Miss Angelou Ellis Taylor, yes. And baby, she said that um, she is a prophet and she goes where the Lord tell her to go. And she specializes in a, in a deliverance, all right? She says that there, there's a difference between a deliverance and an exorcism because she don't need no intercessor, okay? She don't need nobody to act on her behalf. She said, the Lord told me to go here and I'm fully equipped, babe. I don't need no support. All right, I got it. Then she tells Ebony about the family that lived in the house prior to the, Ebony and them moving in there. It was a husband and a wife and they had some children. And baby, she said one day it just was not, it, it wasn't curling over for the for the family. And it just, things just started happening. They were so proud of their little house and their little family. And then it just all went to shit. Because one day, baby, they was just um, eating popcorn and watching movies and stuff. And then the next day, you know, the wife cut the husband's head off. And, you know, it just was a problem. And then she hacked the children up too and, and she hung herself. So, you know, it was just... It was a little bit of an issue, and she tried to help that family, but she failed. And I said, oh, girl, I probably wouldn't go around telling people that I'm a prophetess that helps people get delivered when I couldn't deliver the people that was in the house prior to. And you living in a murder house, and now I'm trying to help you because the success rate isn't really, you know, the six, I, you know, the percentage points for the successful deliverance ratio is not as high as I would like it to. I probably would have left that story out. Wow. Reverend Bernice is telling Ebony this at the local McDonald's, okay? 
over there at the house, Miss Alberta getting her ass beat by a demonic spirit. And I didn't know if the demonic spirit was the was Andre in in like liquid form or if it was the little boy Trey or if it was the mama that chopped the husband's head. I don't know who I don't know who that was. I don't know what happened. Ebony hollers out for Andre. Andre come downstairs with the same contouring pattern as Beetlejuice from the 1989 classic, baby. I'm talking about black eyes, okay? Mouth just got, he needs some color correctors. Pull up in the skin. And I said, baby, what is going on? Y'all need to get this little boy that milk he had asked for, baby. Something's going on. He, the little boy come downstairs and say, what happened to grandma? And then Shante said, no, you tell me. Andre walked over to the body of his dead grandma and was like, mm. and then just left. God damn, Andre. Cold bloody. Ebony then took her kids in that Grand Marquis sedan and got on the road, okay? They don't have no suitcases, no bags, no nothing. They just getting up out of Dodge. Good, it's time. It's well past the time, okay? Because she don't want to, she don't want Cynthia to, to come take the kids. Baby, she look in the back, Andre eyes is fully black and it freaks her out. They almost hit a truck. They swerve into a parking lot of a bar and Shante go, I mean, um, and Ebony go in there and say, Lord, y'all got to help me. The bar keep come outside to see the kids in the back like, mother, what is happening? We were sleeping the entire time. You know good and goddamn well you possess. Now don't be lying in the ball, keep face. Blink your eyes two times, Ebony is at the local institution. So they took the kids, they put them in a foster home situation. Ebony did her 48 hour hole. She get out, she goes straight to Miss Bernice, child Reverend Bernice. And Reverend Bernice said, baby, this thing is ancient. Talking about the, the thing that's possessing her children. But see, I would have liked to know how she came to know these things. Like she started talking about how when, you know, the devil was cast out of heaven, some of the angels went with him and they became demons. Okay, cool, we get that part. But how do you know about, how did you know so much about this specific demon? Like, did you, did you go to like, was you down in the crates, like in the library to do some research? Like, did you, are you like a biblical scholar? I don't know, I just would like to know how she became the one to be in this position with all this information that she's trying to equip Ebony with. And now over there at the hospital, Andre is giving Linda Blair. Andre is giving exorcist. Andre is giving, he needs to be left to his own devices. Let him do what he wanna do. Leave him in the room, lock the door and go, hey, like what you in there trying to figure it out for? He'll let you know when he ready to talk. I don't know. I just, I just feel like, you know, certain times in movies, I just be wondering, what the thought process is because they got two little orderlies in there trying to hold the little boy down. He's spitting out foam out his mouth, talking in a different language. The little boy green. He's sitting up calling everybody mama a hoe and stuff. And I said, baby, listen, this is a person that wants to be left alone. Lock the door, bro. Like turn the lights off, lock the door and check on him every two to three hours and see, make sure you all right. What you risking your life for? At this part of the movie, I was confused because I know that there were African Americans involved in the writing and or making of this movie. You know, I felt like in my African American spirit that this next part was just not true to the African American experience. Okay, so because Miss Cynthia going there to check on Andre and Andre started talking about her son that passed away and how he likes to watch her sleep. Of course, like demons do, they be getting spicy in the mouth. They be talking crazy and laughing at you and stuff. So the little boy went from talking like a little boy to talking like, you know, a Mr. Mr. Bernard. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody that fix your carburetor and your, and, your, and your brakes and stuff for a quick little six pack and a little pack of cigarettes. You know, like a little shade tree mechanic. That lets me further know that this time, it's time to go. It's not time for conversation. Not only did she not leave, she stayed and watched this little boy break out of his arm restraints and ankle restraints and give his best Peter Parker performance. He was climbing up the wall backwards. He stopped climbing up the wall in a hero's pose. You know how like in a, in a Marvel movie, They'll like jump and like land and it'll just be like a hero's pose. But he was doing that on the wall on the ceiling. And I said, hey, the fact that Cynthia was standing there with her mouth agape was confusing to me and my African-American spirit because that's when the, like that's when that happens. You know what I'm saying? You see some stuff that's not supposed to be and you don't have no time to ask questions or to figure it out. It's like your African-American spirit tells you to get the fuck up out of Dodge. That's why I say, lock the door. This little boy don't want to be bothered. He's telling you he don't want to be bothered. And you standing in, in there with your peplum top on looking confused. And I was confused about why you was confused. I don't like something like that because it's just not true, bro. Like nobody's going to stand in there and be like, you're going to... 
Like you're gonna go, bro. You're gonna TO that thing. You about to be at the NFL combine. If that were me, I would have moved states, bro. I don't want nothing to do with this whole zip code, area code, country code, postal zip area of the country. Ebony done got her some scrubs making boo who noise sneaking into the damn hospital nurse's response area or whatever she like hey y'all what y'all eating for lunch today what y'all got going on y'all charging okay i'm not charged nurse today you be cool i'm gonna see you later ma'am girl get this wheelchair still this little rusty ass boy out this room and be quiet girl <laughs> say ebony shut up girl <laughs> like girl, so ebony just snuck into the hospital to steal Andre so they could do the deliverance on Andre in the comfort of their own living room, okay? Y'all, they done tied the little boy up to the lazy boy, okay? And they start the deliverance, all right? Then they say some prayers, they do a little recording, they get some consent happening. I was like, okay, cool. Baby, as soon as they start pouring the holy water on the little boy, he go from being the little boy to Miss Glint. I mean, to Miss Albert, you know, the Glint Chloe, to Al, you know what I'm saying? God said, wait a minute. Baby, the line that Miss Alberta, the demon Alberta delivered, have to be some of the most memorable lines that Miss Glenn Close has ever delivered. This is the same lady that was Corella DeVille, folks. This is the same lady that was a murderous, homicidal, sexy ass person in Fatal Attraction. You understand what I'm saying? This is a, this lady been around acting as long as I've been alive, baby. I don't, I, I have not seen everything that she has been in, but I've seen a good little a, amount of Miss Glenn Close stuff now. I don't ever think I would ever live my whole life thinking that I would ever hear Miss Glenn Close saying the shit that she said in this part of this thing. Lee Daniels, how you got her to agree to do this? <laughs> what was that contract like, baby? Because I never... <laughs> <laughs> so, Demon Alberta say, I can smell your nappy pussy. What? Girl, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute now. You can't just, I, I, you know, I had, to, I, wait a minute. Hold on, I'm gonna calm down. Wait a second. Like I said, I know demons get spicy. They be talking crazy in the movies. You should have gave me like a little countdown on the screen, like a five, four, three, two, one, to let me know something was coming. Cause Miss Glenn, girl, that's like he and your mama friend talk about sex or something. It's like weird. Then she gonna tell Ebony, you fucking half breed whore. I should have flushed you down the toilet when you were just a blood clot. Wait, the voice that the demon was talking in sound like a sweet little grandmotherly, you know, make drop biscuits and shit in the morning kind of voice. I got some fresh biscuits and jam. I put up some preserves for you. I should have flushed you down the toilet when you was a blood. Yeah. <laughs> wait a sec, wait a segundo. Wait a segundo. How y'all got Miss Glenn close to get down on the floor in full demon garb with diamond hoop earrings and roll around on the floor like a demon like that. I just was not ready. Next thing I know, the damn demon that jumped up out of the, jumped up and 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 choked Reverend Bernice to death, baby. Threw Miss Bernice from the left side to the right, knocked her head between the walls and the drive. Damn, bro. You know, a exorcism is, that's a Catholic thing. That's like a, you know, a, a very traditional Catholic representation that we've seen on tv right i don't i'm a catholic so that's what i associate it with i don't know if lutherans have their own exorcism practices but because miss bernice said that she was a prophet and that she don't need no intercessor that it wasn't a traditional exorcism to me that said we're not doing that whole catholic traditional exorcism thing this about to be some in the word, we about to be kojic with it, right? So I said, okay, cool. But then the, the kids, they over there with the nuns, right? They over there at, they look like a Catholic school. They in a Catholic group home situation. We even saw some nuns creeping around in the dark and shit. I don't know where they was going, what they was doing. They look unscrupulous. I don't trust them. I don't know. I was confused because it was, are, are we doing Catholic stuff? We not doing Catholic stuff. They all tore up. Nate scratching his ass, like he got claws and stuff, scratching himself. The daughter over there tripping. Andre is the one because Andre turned into his dead grandma, okay? And then once he murdered that lady, he turned back into his old demon self, right? So he crawling around and, you know, doing all kind of stuff. He's in a basement. Before Reverend Bernice died, she had gave 
Ebony, there's a little small ass bottle of holy water or oil or like a little rejuvenation potion or something. I don't know. I don't know. It was buku small. Reverend uh, Bernice said, I was scared when I was doing this. You can't be scared. I was scared and that's what got me fucked up. Nah, you can't. You got to go downstairs and be brave with this small ass bottle of holy water and get the job done. I said, oh, okay. Okay. So Andre down there giving his best, you know, human performance. Mommy, I can't get him out, mom. Help, mom. And they start throwing a holy water on the little boy. The little, the, the thing say, oh, wow. Ah. The little boy say, you don't even know what you're doing. And like slap the holy water out of the out of the lady hand. So then he start beating up on his mama. So she he pulling the lady by her hair. And then he come around to the front. And now he's not Andre anymore. He is now Ebony. So it's Ebony and Ebony looking at each other in the face. It's Demon Ebony and then regular Ebony. So, in yet another moment, I was not supposed to laugh. Ebony suplexed her own self to the ground. I said, what the hell? What, this is a well-rounded demon. I ain't never seen no demon suplex themselves to the ground. So, she starts to think about all the good times that her children have had with her. We ain't get to see them. You know, um, the demon start to say, don't nobody give a fuck about you, girl. What the fuck the demon say? Hey, hey, hey. Ebony girl, don't listen. We all we got, girl. Don't do this. Don't call. Don't bring the Lord into it. Nah, listen. Ebony starts speaking in tongues, and that is just delivering a demon right up out of them. She's getting them delivered up out of there by speaking in tongues. Now I say, okay, well, okay. The demon bursts into flames, and all the children have been excised, and and then Ebony just wake up in the basement. It's a sunny day. All the people at the orphanage, they are just, they don't have no clue that these children was just literally going through hell next to them. Everybody sleeping in their little bunk beds and stuff. And I said, okay. She looked like she has been in a mixed martial arts semifinal battle by the face. She is bruised up, tore up, cut up, terrible, okay? Cynthia pull up and was like, girl, them kids was fucked up. Like, I can't even lie to you. I'm gonna talk to the judge, but I, I don't know, baby, because you got a record. Your kids was towed up. You stole one of them. And we just going to have to be fighting for it. And so Ebony said, you know what? If it's meant to get them back, I'm going to get them. If God say the same and the creek don't rise, I'm going to go ahead and get my kids back. Ebony gives Cynthia a beautiful gold cross. And I'm thinking, baby, where did you get that from? Because you had told me that the Pittsburgh power station was on your ass because you couldn't pay the bills. Where do you get a spare gold cross from, ma'am, that you just got to give out? Like, to me, it seemed like you could sell that and get you some money to pay for you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Okay, cool. You know, like most black movies, they got to give you the little end credits that tell you what happened to the end of the characters. All I was missing was, cause I'm hopeful. Yes, I am hopeful for today. So Ebony got her kids back and they moving back to Philly and she gonna get back with the daddy. Where the hell the daddy was at? That is the end of the movie. This movie was fun. This movie was fun. I feel like Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry are giving us the entertainment value but they just marketing it wrong. That's what I'm saying. Like you gotta give us the giggles. So horror and the thriller is not, it was, it didn't, it didn't manifest in a way. You know what I mean? So I just really enjoyed this movie. It was really funny to me. I I thought all the performances were really good. I just thought what they were working with wasn't what it would have, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? I don't be wanting to talk about people. I just got to be honest though. So comment down below and let me know what you thought of this movie y'all. Have you been delivered? So if you can answer some of my questions in the comments, that would be great too. I'm gonna talk to y'all later. Bye.